Welcome back, trainers! You know, being a Pokemon Ranger usually requires me to be in constant contact with nature and all the creatures that live in it. While I do enjoy helping all the amazing Pokemon out in the wild, sometimes I can't help but let my mind wander about many things. Such as, what does it feel like to fire off a Hyper Beam, or what is evolution like? One question has been on my mind for a while now, and I believe I've finally come up with some pretty good answers. However, I could use some professional help on this topic, and I think I know just who to ask. Now, Pokemon Rangers usually know quite a lot about Pokemon biology and habitats. However, we are not scientists or professors. I do, however, know a professor who would definitely know a good bit about this particular topic. Just off the coast of Johto, there is a little research lab run by a small team and led by none other than Professor Peach. We have worked together before on some projects in the past, and I'm sure she would be more than happy to share some of her expertise with you all. Let's call her up, shall we? Uh, hello? Hey, don't swing on that, it's delicate. Uh, uh Professor? Is everything all right? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything's fine. We just got a small family of Pansage in for a checkup, and we're trying to get them to calm down so we can send them home. Did you need something? Oh, well, you see, I've been thinking about some things, and I could really use a professional's help answering some of these questions. This isn't another question about hyper beams, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, recently, I started wondering about regional Pokemon forms and which one originated first. It felt like a really good talking point to break down, but I got a little stuck with Executor and its Alolan counterpart. So I figured who else to ask but the best Grass-type expert I know. Is that all? Alolan Executor came first, easy. Uh... Oh, were you expecting more? Well, I was actually going to start a new series I call Origin of a Species, where I explain where regional forms come from and how they changed over time and so on. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? I'll make sure to break it down. Awesome. So why don't I break down our subjects first? <clears throat> Executor is a grass and psychic type in its global form, which is most commonly found in Kanto, and is a grass and dragon type in its Alolan form, which you claim is its original form. Correct. In nature, coconut trees are usually tall, towering trees with long bush-like leaves. So, naturally, a Pokémon inspired by such a plant should be much taller if given the right conditions. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a Alolan Executor. However, what about its alternate form? Why could it possibly be so short? Well, there are a few reasons for this, but the best reason would probably be due to its environment. While the Aricaceae or palm tree family is known for growing incredible heights in tropical climates, there are other classes of this tree that are much shorter. Yucca trees especially. Their foliage is much sharper as well, much like Executor's more common form. I would guess that since these trees are much smaller, their natural defenses would want to do what it could to keep animals away from its fruit or other blooms it produces. When you explain it like that, it makes a lot of sense. However, something has bothered me for a long time. Why is Executor a psychic type? I understand that a lot of Pokemon have inspiration and design from real world folklore and such, but is there a natural reasoning as to why it becomes a psychic type or even a dragon type for that matter? Well, its dragon typing could be derived from the Dracaena tree, which is named from the Greek word for female dragon. Or it could be a joke or a reference to the Coco, a dragon-like creature whose name inspired the coconut. Hmm, those are some pretty valid points. But I'm a Pokemon Ranger. I'm out amongst Pokemon all the time, and I know that environment can have a huge effect on a Pokemon's health. I just feel like I'm missing something. Let me see... Hmm... Oh! Look here, Professor. Alolan Executor is almost exclusively found on Executor Island, right? That's right. Well, look what else frequents the island. Pelipper, Cast Form, and Gastrodon. That's right. But look who else decides to show up during the rain. Slugoo? Exactly! Slugoo and its entire line have a lot of inspirations from the real-world slugs and snails. Those creatures can be beneficial to growing plants, of course only in small doses. It rains a small amount on Executor Island, and when it does, the Slugoo appear during or shortly after and probably help break down the soil and add nutrients to it, just like real slugs and snails. And now just a refresher, but what type is a Slugoo? 
A dragon type. Exactly. I feel like this helps explain a lone executor a bit better, but I still don't understand why Cantonian executor is a psychic type. I think I have a reason. Seeing as Executor doesn't have ideal growing conditions most of the time outside of Alola, it would understandably need to store more of its energy to keep itself safe and keep its heads together. Instead of the raw dragon energy it gets, in addition to the perfect amount of sunlight, its heads uses their mental capacity to keep itself safe and together. Thus, its time focusing on staying together has increased its stored psychic powers. Oh, that makes sense. So, let's see if I got this right. Execute more than likely originated from Alola, and it lived its life having fun in the sun, right? Correct. And with Slugu coming to the island when it rains, Slugu's natural slime and protein probably mixed in with the soil. And when it was ready to evolve, Execute probably buried itself in the ground before shooting up into the towering creature it would become, giving them a dragon type over time. Right. But then how did they get outside of Alola? Realistically? People probably brought Execute and Executor with them when they explored outside of Alola. Some as companions and many possibly as trade or exports to new lands. This happens when cultures come together, as individuals like to share their livelihood or experiences with others in hopes of good relations. And yes, people tend to trade animals without knowing if they're well suited to these new environments. I see. So, I guess some Executor were brought to other regions like Kanto or Hoenn, and it didn't have the climates for them to grow properly? Most likely. However, it seems like the alternative versions are doing just fine, and have adapted pretty well to most of the environments they've ended up in. Thanks for your help, Professor. I would love to talk to you more in the future about other species' origins. In fact, I have a few ideas about- <gasps> Dang it, guys! I told you not to swing on that! <sighs> Are you okay? <laughs> Always the busy life of a Pokemon professor. I'll make sure to thank her properly later. And that was the origin of the Executor species. I want to thank you all for watching and supporting me. I could not have gotten this made without you all. Thank you all for the new subscribers, for the viewers, the followers, and especially for all the new friends. I hope we can continue to grow together. Remember, the world is a big place and deserves plenty of care, so keep exploring. And special thanks to Professor Peach for stopping by. If you would love to follow her and her team's amazing work, check her out on Instagram, Twitter, and her amazing blog on Tumblr. Links will be in the description. Also, consider giving me a follow on Twitter if you haven't already. It's the best way to stay up to date on the latest happening here at the Ranger Base. See you soon, trainers!